they'll give you a course before you leave so you can get employment. But until you know what you're doing, you're either out on the streets or you have to move in with relatives, friends. There's no, no help from no one. A lot of them register with the local councils, but they don't get any joy from them. It's the locals that get first on the list. They're left on the streets or they have to pay for boarding houses, that's where the money goes. Then they're left without any money and they ended up on the streets. And when they're on the streets, they commit crimes just to get a roof over the head. That's why they go to prison, just to get a roof over the head and a square meal. The problem is, we've got so much pride that we don't want to reach out. It's like locking your memories in your head and not talking to people because you don't want your fellow comrades to know that you're suffering. It's really important to have developments like this and they ought to exist up and down the country because it's the responsibility of government, whether it be local or national, to make sure that our veterans are well looked after. You know, they've put their lives on the line, they've potentially got broken uh, looking after us. And so it, when, when these people come home, we've got to make sure that they're well looked after. We, don't, we shouldn't be relying on the charities. Those, it should uh, be up to the government and the taxpayer to make sure that these people are well looked after, well catered for, and given an opportunity to get back on their feet and, uh, and re-engage with, uh, with society.